here we are inside the Bailey Pegasus Genoa. As we come to the entrance door, we will find the main control panel just here. So firstly we need to turn on the master switch to turn the 12 volt on and we will then get a indication of the condition of the leisure battery. Above the master switch we then have the main isolator for all of the onboard lights. They can then all be individually turned on and off on their own switches. Over this side we have the awning light on and off and then lastly we have water pump on and off. Whenever the water pump is in operation, so if we just come and open the tap for a second, you'll now see the green light has appeared to let you know that the pump is in operation. We need that pump on to get water out of the taps as we are at the moment and to fill the boiler up if it's been drained down. Next we have control panels just here for the water heater on main supply so when we're hooked up to the mains electric so hot water off hot water on simple as that and then beneath that we then have the controls for the hot water on gas so before we use this we want to make sure that the flue cover is off outside and that the gas bottle is turned on and whereas up here on main supply we will get water at about 60 degrees down here we can either by flipping the rocker switch up or down get hot water at 50 degrees or 70 it's just a matter of just flicking it down like so if the boiler fails to light a red light will appear just to let you know and then it's just investigating why it's failed it may be that you have forgotten to take the flue cover off or turn the gas bottle on or you've depleted all your gas or sometimes it may happen as well if you have a little bit of air in the system. For the heating, we can either use the fire on gas, and if we're going to do that, we just come to this dial here and twist it, and once we start to twist it, we will get a ticking noise. It's then just a matter of holding it down, and once the ticking stops, it's usually a fairly good indication that it's lit, we can also, as you can see there, just peer for the pilot light as well. And when we let go of the top here, we usually get a whoosh as well. Regardless whether we are going to be using the fire on gas or main supply, this part here just controls the circulation fan that will then blow the air out of the air ducts around the caravan. We are currently in the off position, just here. If we now flick it down to M for manual, the fan will then start, and then we can control the fan speed just here. If it's a warm day and you just want the fan to blow out cold air, we can flick it to this one here, and the fan will just run at maximum level. The A will not work in this model of caravan, it stands for automatic and you do have to have a secondary thermostat added. If we want to use the electric element in this fire, we just need to come up to this point here. You will see we have the master switch for it, so this first thing needs to be on. And then we come to this little dial here. And this dial has an inner and an outer. The outer part picks the power so we can either run it on main supply using 2 kilowatts, main supply using 500 watts or 1 kilowatt. So this is just really dependent on the ampage of the site you're on to stop yourself from tripping. Once you've picked the inner dial then controls the convection. If you are using 
this fire on gas and you turn this and you don't get the ticking noise it may just mean that the battery has gone flat for the igniter and that is just located just down here and you just need to slide the cover up and you'll see that there is a AA battery just tucked there. Next we have the location of the consumer unit just here. So we have the main strip switches along the top so we've got the individual MCBs just here, the RCD and the test button and then beneath that we then have all the 12 volt fuses and again they're all labelled up. So if something's not working in the van this is just your first port of call to see whether or not you've tripped or if it's a 12 volt issue you've blown a 12 volt fuse. Behind the consumer unit we have the control board for the motor mover just down there and the actual battery charger itself actually sits inside the consumer unit as well. If we now go across to the other bench seat and we raise this side up we then have the Truma boiler just here. You will also see the water pump just here and the surge dampener. To drain the boiler down for winterization, it is just done on this yellow lever just here. All we need to do is make sure the water pump has been turned off and then flap this up like so. Because I've left the water pump on at the moment, all the water pump is now doing is frantically trying to refill the boiler. So to refill it, flap it back over, make sure you've got water in your aqua roll, and then turn your water pump on to reprime. I always suggest that when fully draining down, especially for winter, that once you've flapped, off this lever, flapped up this lever here, that you then open up all of the taps as well. This will aid in draining down, releasing airlocks, etc. But what we also hope will happen is if there was a harsh frost, as the water freezes, it will be forced out the end of the taps into icicles instead of expanding in the pipework and splitting it. With this model of Bailey Caravan, we can also feed from an onboard water source. So we have the water carrier just here, and we have the hose coming from that water carrier going across to this lever here. So currently with the lever in the position that it is at the moment it is feeding from the aqua roll outside. If I want to feed from that onboard water tank all I need to do is come to this lever here and then we need to turn it so it is facing in the opposite direction. You will also see that there's the gas isolation tap for the boiler itself, it is in the on position and with all gas taps within the caravan I do always say they can stay all on. They're more for maintenance than anything else and secondly if you do smell gas in the van it's always safer to go to the actual bottle itself and turn it off. With the bed itself it is just a matter of pulling right the way out and then literally dropping in your cushions. Very, very easy. We have just up here the television aerial. So to use the television aerial we firstly want to make sure that the digital amplifier is turned on. This is on and off just up here and we can also control the boost on the inner dial just here. After that we then want to raise the mast so if we undo the collar just here we can then raise it up and get it into the position that we require. This little green part here represents the back of the aerial so we know where the aerial is pointing 
and then we can lock it into place. If we do need to do additional tuning, what we can do at the moment, this says H just here for horizontal. We can flip the aerial onto its side into the vertical position for additional tuning and all we do is we just turn the tail just here. Do make sure that the aerial is down for travel and do not over tighten this collar because you can split it. Also located in here is the head unit on and off just here. CD in here, reject on here. We do have auxiliary connectivity as well. Switch between functions on the on off button. And then search or change tracks just here. And we also have an easy graphic equalizer just up here. The microwave behaves like most microwaves do. Do make sure that the plate is removed for travel. We have quick start just here and stop or we can twist for time etc just here and then we have auto cook, power settings, defrost. There is a switch right beside it and that just does the lighting underneath just here. You will find also if we just look up here we have more light switches that are kind of hidden as well which are just here and exactly the same on this side as well. We now have the hob so we have four gas rings just here and it is just a matter of pushing in twisting and then pressing the igniter down here. So I'm now just going to light them all. There we are, and then if we turn them all back off again, and then with the oven and grill, it is just pushing, twist, and again press the igniter. And if we go to the oven. There we go. Beneath the oven we have the majority of the rest of the gas isolation taps just here. And they are labelled just here. You'll also find a plug plugged in, which is for the fridge. If we now move to the fridge itself, off just here. Main supply just here with a little picture of the two pin plug. 12 volt maintain for when we're towing and gas if we are going to use the unit on gas basically what we want is this line here to drift out of the white into the green so if we come across to the temperature control hold it in and push the igniter once it's lit you can see it just stays in the green just there. To open, just push down. And then as soon as we turn it to something else, it will then put itself straight back out again.
if we now go into the washroom, we have the fit for toilet just here. So the bowl moves all around, open to the cassette just here, and then push to flush just on the top, and then close to the cassette again on the grey lever. If this has been left open and you try to remove the cassette from the outside, it will not come out. Level indicator just here, so this will illuminate to let you know when the cassette needs emptying. We then have the wardrobe and the shower just here. Do make sure that the shower screen is secure for travel. And then we have the basin. In the large wardrobe, we have the two infills if we are using the full U-shaped lounge. If you are going to do that, you just need to remove the chest of drawers.